In the introduction of Great Expectations, seven-year-old Pip, the protagonist, looks over the graves of his parents in a cemetery on the marshes, where he meets an escaped convict who terrifies Pip and orders the boy to bring him food and a file. Pip lives with his older sister, Mrs. Joe, and her husband, Joe, a blacksmith. Pip aids the convict, and the following day, Pip and Joe tag along with soldiers searching for two missing convicts, Magwitch and Compasson, who were rearrested. A wealthy, reclusive woman named Miss Havisham sends for Pip to visit her. Miss Havisham is decrepit looking, wearing a faded wedding dress. Pip plays cards with Estella, Havisham's adopted daughter, who insults him. During the rising action, Pip then begins to visit Miss Havisham on a regular basis. Pip becomes infatuated with Estella, but sees himself as her ah. inferior. Pip becomes Joe's apprentice, but is ashamed of his work. One day, Miss Havisham tells Pip that his services are no longer required. Pip develops a desire to become a gentleman. Attacked by an unidentified assailant, Mrs. Joe loses her ability to speak. A young woman named Biddy comes to nurse Mrs. Joe. After several years, a visiting lawyer named Mr. Jaggers tells Joe and Pip that an anonymous benefactor wants to pay for Pip to be educated as a gentleman. Pip assumes it's Miss Havisham. Pip heads to London and stays with a young man named Herbert Pocket who explains how Miss Havisham was jilted by her lover on her wedding day and has since remained a recluse. Pip is tutored by Matthew Pocket, Herbert's father. Pip becomes friends with Jaggers' clerk, Wemmick. Pip acts and lives like a gentleman, uncomfortable about the crude-mannered Joe visiting him. Pip again visits Miss Havisham and sees Estella, who is now a beautiful lady. Mrs. Joe dies and Pip briefly returns to attend the funeral at Joe's house. On Pip's 21st birthday, Mr. Jaggers tells Pip he will now receive the funds his anonymous benefactor promised. Two years later, Magwitch tells a shocked Pip that he is Pip's benefactor. Feeling he owes Magwitch a great deal, but also ashamed of him, Pip plans to leave the country with him. Visiting Miss Havisham and Estella, Pip realizes that Estella plans to marry the brutish Bentley Drummle, which breaks his heart. Estella marries Drummle, and Pip learns Magwitch is her father. Pip visits Miss Havisham, who begs Pip to forgive her. After this plea, Miss Havisham's dress catches fire, and Pip puts out the flames. In the climax of the novel, Pip and Magwitch attempt to flee the country in a boat, but fail when they're intercepted by a boat containing authorities and Compasson. Magwitch is severely injured. Because Magwitch has no official heirs, his fortune does not go to Pip, but instead goes to the government. During the falling action, Pip tells Magwitch that his daughter is alive and that Pip loves her. Grateful to hear this news, Magwitch dies. Pip falls ill and is nursed back to health by Joe. Pip visits Joe at his home and realizes that it's on Joe and Biddy's wedding day. Pip renews his friendship with Joe. In the resolution, Pip and Estella show signs of getting together. But in Dickens' original ending, Pip and Estella reconcile, but then part. There are essentially five main characters in Great Expectations. The first is Pip. Philip Pirrip, or Pip, is the protagonist of Great Expectations. As a boy, he seems unsure of his own self-worth and place in the world. His parents are dead, and he's been raised by his bad-tempered sister, Mrs. Joe, and her husband, a blacksmith named Joe. Mrs. Joe often beats Pip and tells him she wishes he was never born. As a result, Pip has a sense of inferiority. Fortunately, Joe befriends Pip and tries to protect him as much as possible. Because of this, Pip forms a strong bond with the simple, kind Joe and looks forward to being his apprentice. However, Miss Havisham and her adopted daughter Estella trigger Pip's sense of inferiority. Under her influence, Pip comes to view being a blacksmith's apprentice as common. To attain validation as a person, Pip believes he must rise to the upper class, transforming himself to win over Estella, an opportunity granted to him by a mysterious benefactor. Then there's Estella, Estella is the adopted daughter of the recluse, Miss Havisham. She is groomed by Miss Havisham to become an instrument of the jilted recluse's vengeance. Under Miss Havisham's influence, Estella suppresses her natural desire for love and to express it. As a result, her own heart has grown cold. She marries an abusive brute, Bentley Drummle. Miss Havisham is another key character. Miss Havisham comes from a wealthy family that gained a fortune through a brewery. As a young woman, Miss Havisham developed into a proud, headstrong person. She became engaged to a man even though relatives warned her against it. 
When the man jilted Miss Havisham on her wedding day, he <laughs> deeply wounded her. Miss Havisham became a recluse for whom time stopped on her wedding day. She lives in a state of frozen time in her home, Saddest House, wearing her wedding dress and withering away. Abel Magwitch is another important character. An escaped convict who tells young Pip to get food and a file for him, Magwitch at first appears to be a terrifying hardened criminal who hates another convict named Compasson. An early indication that more lies beneath Magwitch comes when he takes responsibility for stealing food even though Pip actually stole it for him. Later, Pip learns about Magwitch's hard life growing up in poverty without parents and then his life as a transported convict in Australia. Magwitch is Pip's secret benefactor, who bankrolls Pip's training to become a gentleman. Then there's Joe Gargery. Joe Gargery is a blacksmith who befriends his wife's younger brother, Pip. Joe is a simple, kind man who accepts his life and wants nothing more. Joe values hard work, honesty, and friendship. He has respect and integrity. Joe acts awkwardly toward Pip after he becomes a gentleman. He eventually marries Biddy, Pip's former friend and tutor, and rekindles his friendship with Pip. Emotionally evocative symbols, chief among them tears, the saddest house, and money itself, occur repeatedly throughout Great Expectations. Charles Dickens uses tears to represent passionate emotions, like gratefulness, love, and shame. In Great Expectations, tears have a benevolent, clarifying effect. When Pip cries, he feels better afterward. After Pip cries tears of shame from Estella's insults, he is able to continue in his daily life. When Pip cries tears of remorse about his treatment of Joe, he can more fully sense how wrongly he treated his friend. The only tears that do not have a positive effect are the crocodile tears shed by Mrs. Camilla because they represent false emotions. Another important symbol is the saddest house. The saddest house represents a lack of growth or death. Miss Havisham's hateful and bitter attitude creates a structure in which time seems to stand still, literally, as all the clocks have stopped at the time her wedding was to have taken place. Nothing significant changes in Saddest House. The furniture remains in the same position without being dusted for years. The wedding cake remains on the table, covered in cobwebs. Miss Havisham has created her own mausoleum that will house her corpse. Saddest is Latin for enough. The title could be ironic. Estella suggests the term saddest implies that a person who owns this house has enough of everything. However, Miss Havisham doesn't have enough love. In fact, <laughs> she does not have enough of anything except money and bitterness. Money is another key symbol. In Great Expectations, money represents the value that society places on someone. Many characters value themselves and their own personal worth as human beings around their economic, money-possessing value. Charles Dickens uses money in the novel to represent power or control over people. For example, Miss Havisham uses money like a puppet master to make Estella do exactly what the recluse wants her to do in London. Also, Magwitch uses money to control Pip and make him into what Magwitch wants, namely a gentleman. But Miss Havisham and Magwitch's use of money to control people backfires. Estella becomes cold toward Miss Havisham. Pip becomes miserable as a gentleman, but doesn't tell this to Magwitch, instead wishing he'd never come and he'd never become a gentleman in the first place. Great Expectations is underscored by some important duality-driven themes. Social class and ambition, guilt and redemption, and uncertainty and deceit. From the lower classes to the upper classes, Great Expectations can be seen as an exploration of social class and ambition. In Victorian England, members of the lower class and middle classes often had the ambition to rise up to a higher class. In contrast, members of the upper class wanted to maintain their superiority and use it to control other people for their own ends. Magwitch, the main representative of the lower classes, was born into poverty and because of these circumstances, fell into a life of crime. Dickens shows that some lower class people become caught in a trap of poverty that makes it difficult for them to improve their lives. Magwitch realizes he will never become a gentleman, but he has ambitions to make Pip a gentleman and thereby attain upper class status. Because of the influence of the upper class Miss Havisham, Pip comes to view being a blacksmith as inferior work 
and he has the ambition to become a gentleman, hoping to receive the approval of Miss Havisham and her daughter Estella, and thereby validate himself as a human being. His ambition is to win Estella's approval, but for Miss Havisham, her ambition is to have Estella break the hearts of men. Guilt and redemption is a theme that drives Pip, whether helping a convict, wanting to rise in social station, or becoming a gentleman. Pip is plagued by guilt throughout the novel, too. Pip feels guilt in how his snobbish rise in status makes him look down on Joe, but by the novel's end, he mends his friendship and is redeemed. Pip thinks he can attain redemption only when his dream of marrying Estella and gaining Miss Havisham's approval happens, but this vision crumbles. Eventually, Pip realizes he can gain self-worth not by becoming a gentleman, but rather by working for it. As a result, he works for many years as Herbert's business partner, redeeming himself. For most of the novel, Miss Havisham shows no guilt, but she realizes that she has trained Estella to not only break the hearts of men, but break her own heart. Because of this, she asks for Pip's forgiveness. Consumed by feelings of guilt, Miss Havisham is unable to grasp redemption through accepting Pip's forgiveness. Dickens starts the novel with uncertainty and deceit. Pip is uncertain about what his parents look like, then uncertain about the convicts. This uncertainty leads to his deceitful act of stealing food in a file. Pip's uncertainty about his benefactor is in part caused by Miss Havisham's deceit about being Pip's benefactor. Pip becomes involved in the deceitful act of trying to sneak Magwitch out of the country while feeling uncertain whether Compasson is following him. But Dickens shows how removing deceit can also eliminate uncertainty. For example, Pip feels uncertain about the identity of Molly, Mr. Jaggers' housekeeper. But Pip becomes surer of her identity as he learns about Mr. Jaggers' deceitful act of secretly giving Estella to Miss Havisham to raise as her adopted daughter. Estella, it turns out, is the daughter of Molly and Magwitch.